Since the development of the Neo Egoless League, players have been forced to adapt and learn new positions in order to secure a spot for Jinpachi Ego's Japan U20 team. And thanks to this new opportunity, we have seen many players in the NEL shine as goalkeepers, defenders, and midfielders. Some of those players are desired by top European clubs. There are so many talented players in the NEL, but in this video, we won't be talking about the best players. We'll be talking about some of the players that aren't in the top 10 rankings, but they deserve a lot more credit and recognition. So without further ado, let's talk about some some of the most underrated players in Blue Lock's Neo Egoist League. To begin, let's talk about Nico. Nico is currently ranked 11th with a value of 40 million yen. This is his final offer since Uber's played all of their NEL matches. 40 million yen for a player of Nico's caliber, this feels a little low in our opinion. Nico was instrumental in Uber's NEL campaign and played a key role in the team's structure. Throughout his time in the NEL, Nico was able to start in three matches for Uber's, helping them get two wins and one loss. In the Uber system, Nico started as a defensive midfielder, but but he was able to interchange positions with Don Lorenzo. This allowed Nico to act as both a center back and a defensive midfielder for Ubers. Nico is a ball winning defender who loves to crush his opponents by using his vision and intelligence. He's able to read the entire state of the field and take in most parameters of the field. Taking in all this information, Nico is then able to determine where the greatest danger is and how to stop it from happening. In the NEL, Nico has been able to prove how vital these defensive skills are, especially in the Ubers versus Bastion Moonshine match. He was able to roam around the field and look for the best opportunity to steal the ball from the opposition and start a counterattack for Ubers. After awakening Metavision, Nico was able to improve his watchtower style and became an even bigger problem for Bastion Munchen. Nico was able to further improve his abilities on offense with Metavision and create brilliant link-up plays with Lorenzo, IQ, and Baro. At one moment in the match, Nico was even able to outsmart Noel Noah and created a chance for Baro to shoot the ball. Nico did help Ubers get two dominant wins and Nico played a vital role by playing as defensive midfielder and center back. As a player, Nico proved his skills by shutting down other teams offenses and restricting them with only one goal. I agree. He's a special talent and he deserves more than 40 million yen. And coming up next, we want to talk a little bit about Sendo. Sendo is currently ranked 13th with a value of 37 million yen. And this is his final offer since he plays for Ubers. Sendo played three matches in the NEL for Ubers, helping them get two wins and one loss. Since joining Ubers, Sendo has been playing as a second striker behind Ubers ace striker Baro. As the second striker, Sendo's main role is to act as Baro's shadow and help expand his attack options. Sendo's ability to play as a shadow striker can throw off the opposing defense's focus. Acting as Baro's shadow, Sendo was able to link up with the Uber's midfield and create chances for Baro to score a goal. Sendo's all-around play is very versatile. Ever since he lost the status of U20's ace, Sendo has been open to change and he's willing to contribute wherever he can. He shows great tenacity and immense work rate on both defense and offense. He's proven himself to be a useful asset for Ubers. During the Bass Mutant vs Ubers match, Sendo was able to assist Baro's first goal. He was also able to to press Isagi and allow Nico the chance to steal the ball from Isagi, and he was able to block Hiyori's shot at the end of the match as well. He proved to be very important in that Ubers vs. Bastion Mutant match. In their last match against Manchine City, Sendo was able to assert himself and he surpassed everyone's expectations. In the dying moments of the match, Shigeru was able to block Baro's shot, and to everyone's surprise, Sendo arrived in the penalty box and he was chasing down the rebound. Sendo runs the ball and smashes in the rebound, and with that, Sendo scored the winning goal of Ubers final match. I mean, Sendo can do it all. He can play defense and block shots, assist his teammates, and he can even score goals of his own. Sendo could be a great addition to Ego's Japan U20 team. His skills as a player are too valuable to not utilize in the U20 World Cup. I agree. I think he deserves a spot on Jinpachi Ego's Japan U20 team. But moving forward, let's talk about the midfield general, Karasu. Karasu is currently ranked 15th with a salary of 35 million yen. Personally, I can't believe Karasu is in the middle of the pack like this. With the way he's been playing, he deserves a higher salary and position within the NEL auction system. Completely agree with you. Karasu has been excelling as a midfielder for PXG, and he has played in every single match in the NEL. Karasu has been playing a key role in controlling the midfield, directing the team play, and breaking up the opponent's attack. He can be seen as the unsung hero of PXG's team. Karasu is the heartbeat for PXG's midfield and the NEL. Since he does all the dirty work in the midfield, like fighting for possession, allowing for players like Charles to freely play to their ideal standards, Karasu's presence and work rate allows for Charles to focus on playmaking and creating scoring chances for PXG. You're right. Since Karasu plays this role, he can really allow Charles to do whatever he wants and lets the PXG attack go to their full capability. Karasu can be seen as the ultimate midfielder since he can do this. He can participate in both offense and defense. He's shown the capabilities of shutting down multiple teams' offenses, and he's provided important link of play in his own team's offense as well. Karasu's been flourishing as a midfielder for PXG, and he's been a key factor in all three of PXG's wins. And in the current match against Bastion Munchen, we are seeing Karasu get some great moments 
moments. He was able to steal the ball of Kaiser in the beginning of the match, and he was able to help Ren shut down Kaiser Impact. Moments after this happened, Karsu won the loose ball that led to the PXG counterattack, which ultimately led to Shido scoring the first goal of the match. Karsu is cooking Bastion Moonshine. He is popping up everywhere on the pitch and becoming a nuisance. His value is immense. Without Karasu, PXG would not be in the lead. He definitely deserves a spot higher than 15th when this whole ranking system is over. And the next player we're going to talk about is Corona. Corona is currently ranked 16th with a value of 34 million yen. At this moment, Corona has only played in two matches in NEL, but there's a good chance he comes in as a sub against PXG. Throughout his time with Bastion Munchen, Corona has been playing as a right back and acting as Isagi's shadow. His main role in the team is to expand Isagi's attacking options and create opportunities to assist Isag. He accomplishes this by utilizing his speed, agility, along with his high level short passing. And talking about his speed specifically, Isagi said that Kuruna's speed allows him to appear in the perfect position at the best time. And by utilizing all these abilities, Kuruna has been flourishing as a fullback and Isagi shadow in the NEL. He was able to get some important passes to Isagi in the Manshine City match, and he was able to get an assist against Ubers before picking up an injury. Hopefully he gets an opportunity to play against PXG and he can further increase his ranking, because as things currently stand, Kuruna should definitely be ranked higher than 16th in our opinion. With that, let's move on to our next pick, Kiori. Kiori is currently ranked 22nd with a value of 20 million yen. Kiori is only going to play two matches in the NEL. He wasn't selected in the first two matches for Bastion München, but he did come on as a sub against Ubers and helped the team win. After that impressive performance, he earned a starting spot as a right back and Isagi Shadow since Kuruna picked up an injury against Ubers. As a player, Kiori is a very talented passer and he usually acts as the team's playmaker. His vision enables him to envision the best pass available in any given situation. He's able to send final passes to almost any attacker. Yuri, fresh off the bench, was able to toy with the whole Uber's defense and send the best pass to Isagi to score the winning goal. Yuri can effortlessly link up with any player, being able to calmly create space and send a perfect pass. His combination of vision and ball control led Isagi to refer to him as a technician of stillness. Since acquiring MetaVision, Yuri is able to use MetaVision as a means to shadow Isagi and create perfect plays for him. By anticipating his movements and supporting him through a shared vision, Yuri is able to cover any gaps and create opportunities to assist Isagi and potentially other players. And moving on, we're going to talk about another unsung hero of the Bastion Munchen team, and that player is no one else but Raichi. Raichi is currently ranked 23rd with a value of 18 million yen. Raichi has only played in two matches in the NEL. He helped Bastion Munchen get a win against Ubers, and he is starting against PXG in the NEL Championship match. For Bastion Munchen, Raichi has been playing as a defensive midfielder, and he's also been acting as a box box midfielder. In this position, Raichi has mainly been having to play support and show up in every aspect of the pitch. Raichi has been excelling in this position, and he can be seen as the support system for Bastion Munchen. When used correctly, Raichi can be a pivotal defensive piece of a team's formation, as shown in both the first selection and the Neo Egoist League. Raichi displayed amazing dueling abilities in the match against Italy's Ubers. He was able to outplay MetaVision users like Nico at some moments, as well as helping Isagi limit Snuffy's options. Raichi's stamina enables him to continue playing at optimal capacity, which combined with his man marking ability makes him a constant threat. It's evident he is a crucial part of the Bastion Munchen defense. Even Noah Noel himself requested that Raichi becomes the heart of the team and support both Isagi and Kaiser. He's an integral piece in Bastion Munchen's success and without Raichi, they definitely wouldn't have won that game against Ubers and I believe he's going to be an important key in stopping PXG. And moving on to our final player that we consider to be underrated, we're going to take a look at Nanase. Nanase is currently ranked 24th and valued at 16 million yen. Nanase uses his off the ball movement to position himself in ways to assist his teammates. He uses the skill to break down defensive formations and he has a very keen analytical ability of using the skill to get to the right places at the right time and creating chances for his teammates. He is so good at moving into other people's blind spots that he's even able to get past players like Isagi. And we learned that Nanase is inherently ambidextrous. In contrast to Kunigami's ambidexterity, both of Nanase's sides are at the same level with each other. This weapon grants him the ability to contribute to a teammate's goal from just about any direction. We've seen his ability improve immensely since joining PXG. Since joining PXG, he's committed to playing as Rin Shadow. He's been acting as a post player and increasing the opportunities for Rin to score goals. And we do see that in the current PXG versus Bastion München match. Nanase used this ambidextrous ability to link up with Rin. This hasn't equated to anything miraculous yet, but giving your strikers more attacking options easily makes Nanase a huge asset to the team. If Bastion München takes their eyes off Nanase, they could potentially miss a huge link up play between him and Rin. I completely agree with that statement. We saw early on in the match that Nanase was able to intercept the ball and send a good pass to Rin. He could be the one assisting Rin and 
potentially even earning a spot in the Japan U20 team if he continues to be this useful. I agree, and honestly, I think Nanase has potential to be the unsung hero of this match for PXG. I don't think that's out of the question, but what do you guys think? Do you think Nanase will have an impact in this match, and how do you feel about the players we selected? Do you think we left someone out? Do you think someone shouldn't be in this video? Please let us know in the comments, and thank you again for sticking to the end. And if you enjoyed the video up until this point, please consider giving it a like, a comment, and also please consider subscribing to the channel. We also do have a community Discord, and the link to that Discord is in the description of this video. Thank you again. This is Tev. And it's Lotus. Peace. Catch you in the next one.